Hi, everyone. I have really been looking forward to today, even though it was really difficult to get here. Uh, so much so that I started playing around with the logo of the conference, right? Uh, I wanted that rocket to look more like the emoji rocket, and I wanted that swirling S to, to read more like an S. But then I thought, this is all a little too unwieldy for a logo. Like, dimensions are difficult here. You don't easily make this into a sticker. So what if we combine the objects, put them inside a squircle? It is an iOS dev conference after all, right? But then I'm, I'm not loving the colors here. What if we could tie this more to Spain? Uh, now we're talking, right? Still a little too messy for my taste. What if we move the brackets as part of the word mark, cleaning up the mark itself? Using SF Mono, the default font in Xcode, still something wrong. It kind of reads as NSS pain. Um, what if we place the brackets here uh, and enlarge the rocket and make that swirling S go around the rocket, maybe? Uh, I don't know. It's getting there. I mean, I'd, I'd totally wear a T-shirt with this. Um, sorry. Uh, my name is Michael, and uh, I easily get excited. Uh, my career... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> my career is a long string of me trying to make things that I think is fun. I am a passionate graphic designer. I run a small game studio called Northplay. And uh, I run a resource platform called Apply Pixels and generally just try to get involved in as many side projects as I can while being a dad. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about one of my absolute favorite things in my career. You could say that it has shaped most of what I do and unlocked countless of adventures. I'm, of course, talking about the art of app icons. Now, th those little glowing shapes on our devices, I have dedicated a good part of my career uh, to this corner of design. I simply love app icons. They continue to be everything that excites me about visual design. And today, we're going to celebrate them, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How are we going to do that? Well. I'm going to tell you why I love them so much and why you should care. I think that's going to be an easy sell. You guys are developers. Um, I'm going to share a project that I've made that uh, taught me a lot about art and the state of modern software. And then uh, we're going to look at how we can advance the craft together. And hopefully, in 30, 35 minutes, you'll go to lunch slightly more inspired, both appreciative of app icon design, but maybe also the very nature of making things. A phone. There we go. <laughs> and an internet communicator. An iPod. <laughs> A phone. <laughs> Are you getting it? Are you getting it? So what did Jobs use to introduce the iPhone? He used app icons. So since the iPhone's public reveal in 2007, iOS applications have been primarily identified, embodied, and personified by a single piece of artwork, the app icon, a square piece of artwork with a masked corner red eye. Digital design changed forever with the introduction of the smartphone. Entire new disciplines were created, and existing ones were transformed. One of the fields that would never be the same again was icon design. Icons have always played a vital role in the user interface, but with the wide adaptation of touch-enabled devices and the rise of apps, the relative niche skill of iconists exploded in demand. All of a sudden, app icons were everywhere, right? To a much greater extent than icons in the past, the app icon was tasked with balancing a range of responsibilities. This little image here would be the one thing that the user would come to connect with your product. It's the first thing they see when they meet the app in the store. It's what they remember every time they think of your app. It's what they scan for on their home screen when looking for the app. And so an icon needs to stand out and not just look like all the rest of the icons. And designers of app icons, us, need to carefully think about all of these things when we communicate the importance of this design to stakeholders, and when we set out to create that one singular piece of graphic design that will crown an application. It really is a multifaceted discipline, and one that I have spent most of my career pursuing. All the way back from the skeuomorphic heyday. You guys remember this? Yeah. Where 10,000 hours of digital woodwork was a badge of honor where every app icon was a carefully crafted artwork, where textures, 
and reflections ranged supreme, where every pixel was maximized to tell a story, to stand out, to invoke some sort of emotion. It was the time of pixel Jedis, and I had just joined the academy. Then came order iOS 7 and killed all the Jedis. <laughs> And we had to find ways to still express ourselves under the rule of minimalism in the land of flat glyphs on colored backgrounds, where the goal was to do a lot with a little, finding ways to still pursue the sort of art that I thought was fun, sneaking in dimensionality, keeping it minimal while bending shapes and light, trying to imbue my work with little aha moments, little winks to the viewer, whether that be a, a 2D rocket, or a 3D boat, or just a cute mascot, or a sunset behind a mountain. Like these days, the spectrum has widened, and I'm asked to produce all sorts of icons. Both minimalistic concepts, or icons that appear minimal, but actually hide subtle textures, always trying to get that in, to more full-fledged dimensional renders. And I love working on all of them. So we have lived through a golden age of icon design, but a lot of that art is disappearing. So four years ago, I wrote a tweet. I had decided to make a book about app icons. I had bought the domain. There's nothing like public commitment to make sure that we get things done, right? I figured logo design had beautiful coffee table books dedicated to it, so why not app icon design? I wanted to capture everything I just talked about in a book, in a beautiful art book that would celebrate uh, the craft, inspire new work, and preserve the history of the art that has lived on our mobile devices this past decade. I mean, how hard could it be, right? <laughs> Turns out it's really hard. Uh, I wanted the book to not just contain my art, but art from a whole generation of designers and developers. To print a book full of other people's art you need stakeholders to sign legal agreements to make it safe for them and for me to feature their work in a worldwide publication. I think I must have sent around 10,000 emails to, more, to get more than 1,000 license agreements signed. It was a, a massive effort. Luckily, I had some help. With the, the power of the internet, I connected with Jim Nilsson, who runs the iOS icon galleries, Anders Bothman, who's a Danish print designer, and Mark Edwards, who's just a good friend and a pixel connoisseur in his own right and uh, Oliver Lindbergh, who is one of the best editors I've ever worked with. Now, together, we embarked on this year-long quest to bring this project of icon love into the world. Nothing could stop us, except a lot of things did. One issue that we would continuously hit upon was this. Many of the icons were just gone. Like, 10 years in app development time is like a lifetime. Most of these apps we wanted to feature wasn't around anymore. They had either closed up shop, been bought, or just vanished. I'm sure you guys have a few of, like, quite a lot of art that's vanished for you. Um, and it kind of painted a spooky picture. Most of the indie apps from the early years of the App Store had disappeared. It seemed like if you couldn't turn it into a platform, you either got bought, Sherlocked, or just went out of business. So our job then became that of internet archaeology to find the people behind these long-lost apps, often tracing companies through acquisitions before we could find someone on the other end who could sign off on the agreement and get us high-resolution files. It also made something else very clear to me. I might have started this project because I wanted to shine a light on this art form that defined my career, but I was now seeing that the project had an equally important task, preserving the history before it quickly disappeared to time. So Mark Edwards, he points this out in the foreword of the book, and I think it's such a damning fact of everything that we developers and designers do today. Early cartridge and disc-based games have been fairly easy to preserve, right? If you have a Nintendo Entertainment System and a game cartridge, you can play the game. But this is not possible for iPhone apps. To run an old iPhone app, you'll need an older device and for the related cloud services to be running as they were at the time. Modern software is in a strange place where it's more at risk of being erased from history than software created in the pre-internet era. Think about that. Everything that we work on is incredibly ephemeral. 
all of our efforts, our code, and pixels are so easily lost to time. Yes. It was an incredibly long journey of curating all the icons, much longer than I can capture in a talk. I knew from the beginning that if I was to stand a chance of getting the book out of my immediate network of pixel pushers, I had to use crowdfunding. So I spent three months working on the campaign. And after four long years, it was finally time to launch the Kickstarter. So in November 2021, I clicked that big button. I was crazy nervous. Would anyone really care? Would enough people care? The goal was uh, 10,000 euros. And maybe we'd make a few hundred books. It was a horrible business proposition, to be honest but I just really wanted it to exist in the world. The book got funded in 49 minutes. Woo! And it went on to raise 136,000 euros before it ended on December 10th, 1,364% funded. So that definitely put all that to shame. <laughs> Suddenly, we're looking at an initial print run of thousands of books. And furthermore, lots of people had now discovered the projects and were submitting even more icons, right? I thought it was almost done. Um, the race was now on to finalize the book. We expanded it with another 10 pages, did multiple iterations on colors and final layout, and uh, interspersed between the pages of art. The book also features sections like a short history of the platform and a primer on app icon design. There's also artist spotlights in there. Uh, with the humans behind the art, uh, sharing some of their insights. I, I really love that, that part of the book. It's very nice. So we partnered up with a small printer from Denmark. I'm from Denmark. Um, that has a long history of making quality art books. And a lot of the work that we screen designers do lack the mechanical and production aspects of putting together a book. So I found the whole process very fascinating. This beast of a machine here would pump out the half a million pages that we needed for the first editions in like a day. And I was like, I spent four years on this. And it just, here you go, here's the book. <laughs> One big worry I had from the, from the very beginning was how icons designed for screens would look printed on paper. That taking something that's designed in RGB uh, with pixels and putting it onto a page with ink is bound to look very different. So we spent a lot of time iterating on the RGB to SMIC conversion to make this machine print icons that looked as close as possible to what you'd experience on a, on a device. Shipping thousands of books in one of the toughest logistical climates uh, ever was another challenge we had to overcome. Uh, after careful consideration, we decided to do fulfillment ourselves rented a small warehouse, and Anders here, he manually packed up every order before we shipped them to more than 50 countries with DHL. That's a lot of work. I asked him to do a time lapse. <laughs> and it's, it's been absolutely amazing just seeing so many people receive their books, and we couldn't have asked for a better reception. With a lot of help, we made this thing real, produced it, and shipped almost 3,000 tomes of art around the world, a celebration of a craft that clearly means a lot to many of us. And honestly, something I think will live on for a very long time. I already have so many great stories about how, uh, how the book has been like a unifying thing. This is one of my favorite. Elijah here, he brought it to DubDub and had all the developers sign their individual work, which I thought was really cool. Cool. But the book was just one thing that I could do to celebrate the craft of App I Can Design. With all this fresh in my memory, I was thinking of more ways in which we can advance the craft. And um, I have boiled that down to four key areas. First of all, I hope that I might have emboldened you to simply care more about your app icon. Sweat the details, set a high bar for your most important visual asset. Hire a professional if you'd like. There's a lot of incredibly talented people designing, uh, specializing in, in icon design. But also, don't be shy to try, try this out yourself. It's a really fantastic playground. If you'd like to know more about how I do my work, um, then that's in the book. Uh, but uh, the cliff notes is that I go through these phases that helps me produce more thoughtful work. I research and uh, sketch out ideas on paper and uh, basically take it into uh, Photoshop. I use Photoshop. And then take the sketches I like the most and render those. Now I realize when we designers show stuff like this, it kind of feels like this, right? <laughs> But after making this journey from something that just exists in your mind to transferring it onto a screen many times, 
you become better at translating concepts into renders, and eventually you develop an instinct for what works and what doesn't. This is a skill that anyone can train, not just sort of the kids that love to play with crayons when, in, in school, right? You also pick up lots of little ways to get the results you want, little tricks in your favorite design tool, a certain way to render lighting or a detail that you always care for. The cumulative sum of all those small touches combined with your taste in aesthetics makes up your visual style. For most experienced designers, this turns into a distinct fingerprint. With a little practice, you can actually identify an artist simply by looking at their work. And the book is excellent for this because you can look up the artist afterward and be like, oh, I thought that was, that's this guy or this girl. I want you to preserve your work in any way you can. Now, this became painfully obvious when putting together the iOS app icon book. Check in your design files with your GitHub repositories. Have off-site backup if you need. Do anything you can to make sure that the files are available to you in the future. There's, a there's also a lot of other novel ways that you can preserve and celebrate your ephemeral work by uh, bringing it into the real world. Steve uh, Torton Smith made vintage box art for his software. I love this. It's so cool. There's absolutely no reason to do this, and there's absolutely every reason to do this. Here's da the dark group team, team. They printed all their icon alternatives to celebrate an anniversary. Or remember when Panic made Atari-style covers for all of their apps, complete with fake magazine ads from, from 1982? That's so cool. That's Transmit. So nice. Alexander Kessner uh, 3D printed his uh, Diagrams app icon and hand-painted it. What a cool object. Enamel pins from uh, app icons make excellent souvenirs. I make stickers. I actually brought some if you come up and talk to me afterwards. I have a few of the Keep Calm stickers with me. Love stickers. Uh, this is Pecha that we interviewed for the book, and he decorates his office with the icons that he designed. Now, making these novelty products will help preserve and make tangible the work that we're doing. And I highly suggest that you create things like this. They become cherished items that will outlast their software counterparts. Trust me. Another thing that I always try to encourage people to do is to offer alternative app icons. Yes, in your app. Simply increase the amount of app icons that you ship. Embrace user customizability. Get goofy or seasonal. Keep old versions. Don't be scared to let people express themselves with the art that you give them. They'll love your app even more for it. Luckily, this is becoming more and more normal. A good example to highlight here is, of course, Christian Selig's Apollo for Reddit. Wonderful app. He is the one developer I know that commissions more art than any other indie developer. The Apollo set is ever expanding, and it lets users choose their own robot mascot. I love this. He makes icons himself. He pays artists to create their own renditions, and he also invites the community in to submit theirs, adding more and more for every update, and I think that's really cool. So in our game, Conduct This, uh, we let players unlock new app icons when they get a new train so that they can proudly show off their achievements on their home screen. So we just shipped 35 new app icons. <laughs> um, in uh, Hide van der Plo's app, Now Playing, you can unlock new app icons by playing certain types of music. It turns it into a little game to collect them all, right? So cool. And it's not just little indie apps, right? GitHub has an expanding collection of custom icons, and Twitter is also testing support for customizable app icons on iOS. Letting users customize their experience with your app, whether that's supporting color schemes or making alternative app icons, is the future we want for software. It individualizes the surfaces that we touch, and it makes people feel greater ownership. And the art of app icons are better for it. Finally, I think we should just sort of appreciate and normalize the healthy discussions around app icon design. Make sure that the design of the app icon isn't an afterthought, right, but an integral part of the product's development. Praise apps and creators that do well in this field and promote new and experimental work. I have some aspects that I usually teach in uh, workshops uh, that help put some words to good app icon design. Um, I call them the core aspects of app icon design. They're like a set of lenses through which you can view and appreciate your work. I use these core aspects as guiding pillars for the many conceptual and rendering decisions that go into an icon. 
go over them very quickly. One of the most important aspects of an icon is scalability. Makes sense, like since the icon is going to be shown several places throughout the platform and at several sizes, it's important that your creation maintains legibility. Um, and overly complicated icons that try to cram too much into the canvas often fall victim to bad scalability. A few examples, bear, overcast, I think is another great example of a great scalable icon. Consistency. Creating a strong, consistent design language is a powerful way to leave an impression with the user. Good app icon design is like an extension of what the app is really all about, right? And so making sure that the two support each other will create a more memorable encounter. Fantastical. You guys know what this app looks like, right? It's literally, that's the app. It's the colors. It's a calendar, right? Great consistency. Weatherline, sadly not among us anymore. Um, but it has, features these color bars, which was part of the UI here, which I thought was really nice. Maps. It's literally a map, right? Great consistency. So recognizability, that's a, a slightly more abstract concept that deals with your icon's ability to connect the viewer with the app it represents. Now, it has to do with the clarity of concept and how easily you've been able to carry that message in your execution. Icons with high recognizability are often defined by concepts and executions that stick in the, in the minds of users. I think you can talk about designing for recognizability up front and over time. If it's really important that people understand what your app is about up front, you need to think about known conventions and cultural knowledge. You'd probably go for a concept that very literally depicts what this is all about, like the Notes app up here, for example, right? It's very literal. But also, I kind of feel like recognizability can grow over time, like we see with brands, right? For the uninitiated, the Twitter app icon, if I showed that to my mom, it could just as well be a app for cataloging birds, right? Um, there's this danger, though, that if we only ever design for recognizability as a quality that has to be there up front, we'll never make any interesting creative decisions that could eventually grow into something very recognizable over time. A couple examples. Good old clear. Very recognizable. Everyone copied this style afterwards. One password. Such a recognizable concept ties into the whole mental model of it's a keyhole, right? So uniqueness, final aspect. That's a very tricky part of design because it not only relies on your skills, but also on the choices that others are trying to tackle a similar task. Nevertheless, it has to enter into our vocabulary when we're assessing concepts and we're making renders. There's obviously no surefire way of staying unique, but a, a good place to start is to do proper research and avoid overused concepts. I love this example. What is that? <laughs> is it, it's a ghost? I gave this talk a few years back and a guy came up to me and was like, it's not a ghost, it's a condom. I was like, what, with hands? <laughs> but it works, right? I mean, is it because they disappear? Like, I've, I've shared many bottles of wines with friends discussing this icon. Tweetbot, I love all the, 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 all the third-party Twitter clients, but I think uh, Tapbots have really like, kept to the, stuck to their guns in, in sort of showing off the whole uh, anime uh, mechanical robots kind of look. I love it. Deliveries, love this app. I can, it's, it's literally a package. Um, so cool. Also, like a shout out to all the, the old uh, you know, camera apps of back in the day, back when we had those. So much creativity uh, on display there. So I often call app icon design an excellent primer on design in general. If you can master these core aspects of consistency, scalability, recognizability, and uniqueness in a constrained canvas, that process and those skills can be applied to any area of design. App icon design is everyone's perfect playground to become a better designer. And that also goes for all of you developers. There's really no reason not to try your hand at this. So that's my uh, four-pronged plan to keep this craft moving forward without losing sight of what, where we've been. Um, we should strive to raise the bar and improve our work. We should do anything we can to preserve the legacy of what we've already produced. We should make and ship more app, app icons, simply. And finally, we should appreciate app icon design as an integral part of the process when we're making apps. Cool.
I went to visit the La Rioja Museum yesterday. It's a great place, free admission, um, really recommend it. And they've got a very impressive collection of Iron Age items on display on the first floor. Arrowheads, tools, figurines, love stuff like that. Now, as you ascend the stairs and go to the second floor, you walk through the Middle Ages with their Baroque paintings and religious statues. The third floor has modern age art, political imagery, realistic landscape painting, really like this one. Now, if there was a fourth floor on La Rioja Museum, I wonder what it would contain. Like, sure, we have contemporary painters, provocative sculptors and installation art, but maybe we'd also see something like this. This is made by a company called uh, Grid Studio. Some of you might be aware of it. A display piece of the first iPhone and details of the software it shipped with. Because honestly, if you think about it, there aren't a lot of differences between showcasing this and showcasing this. I'm sure to a 16th century person walking by this museum exhibit, some of these items might feel like mundane things, right? Why do we have plates there? <laughs> right? But we recognize it as art and craftsmanship. Now, developers and designers are today's artisans. The things that we produce is utilitarian art. Now, it might be, you know, it might be this, some of my work is certainly this, embellished, made to tell a story, or it, it might be this, you know, a tool, but both have art in them. So when we make something, we're artists, whether that's an app, a feature, or an icon. And when you look at your work through these lenses as something that might one day be displayed in a gallery or a museum, I think it kind of changes how we collectively feel about our work. It isn't just code or pixels on a screen. It's art. This is why I made the book. It's right here. And um, I hope it makes you think differently about your work. And then together, we'll design an artful future. Thank you. Thank you.